everybody. I just wanted to record this video because uh, I know that times are not easy right now. I wanted to go through some scripture with you guys. I uh, wanted to go through the book of Romans, but before we go there, I want to look at Paul's conversion story. So we get a kind of a taste of who the author is before we dive into the book of Romans. So if you would turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 9, and we're going to look at this story together. This is the conversion of Saul. Now, Paul's Hebrew name was originally Saul. God changed that over to Paul, but when he made him the apostle, that is the one who sent his missionary to the Gentiles. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. But, Paul, but Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So we'll pause there for today. I want to look at this. In the, in the book of Acts, we see the gospel is going from city to city. Uh, it, it eventually goes to Cornelius, a Gentile. It's no longer just bound within the Jewish people themselves, but the gospel has the power because of God. The gospel has the power to cross those boundaries that normally separate people out. And now we see this man, this man who hates Christians so much that he's going off and trying to throw them into prison. In a previous story, we saw Saul looking on with approval at the stoning of Stephen. And now we see Saul's conversion. He's on the road to Damascus. He is on his way to bind Christians, throw them into prison, and Jesus interrupts his life. Think about that. The huge barrier, we already mentioned one barrier, the barrier of culture. Huge barrier, very difficult to cross. The gospel has the power to. Look at the barrier in Saul's life. The barrier in Saul's life is the barrier of sin. A hard heart. But the gospel has the power to go into Saul's life and transform him radically. And what is the gospel? The gospel is the message of salvation. That Jesus died for our sins. Paul himself would write, He who knew no sin became sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That is, the judgment that we deserve for our sins was put on Jesus in our place so we don't have to experience the wrath that God has because of our sins. It's His grace. That's the gospel message. That's the message that has the power to save and transform us like it transformed Saul. There's no sin that God cannot overcome. There's no lifestyle that God cannot overcome. Notice something else about Saul real quickly. He was blinded. This, this moment of introspection. He can no longer look outside of himself for approval, but then had to look within. The gospel... God, sometimes when He transforms our lives, He breaks us down. Have you had that moment in your life where you have been broken down, hu humiliated in your sin to the point where you acknowledge God and Him alone as the one 
who has created us. If you haven't had that moment of brokenness, search the scriptures, test yourself, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Because the gospel will break you down. God will use the gospel to break you down, to humble you, to build you up into something. A new creation, something that you could never have imagined. Uh, someone who with humility chases after a new treasure. A new treasure that is Jesus Christ. No longer the things of this world, but your treasure will be Christ and in Him alone. I hope you enjoy this time where you can learn a little bit from Saul's life. Let's close our time together in a word of prayer. Father, we are grateful for who you are. We're thankful for your word and for your truth. We're thankful for this man's testimony. And I pray, Lord, we would learn something about this man's testimony and we would be able to apply that to our own lives. I pray, I pray that you would uh, continue to be with us during this time, uh, that we have to be distant and apart from each other. I pray we wouldn't neglect you. We wouldn't neglect your word. I pray that you would give us wisdom and how to be hospitable even during these times. Ultimately, Lord, I pray that we worship you. And it's only because of your son I can pray. Amen.